So the Little Free Libraries were begun in 2009 by the late Todd Bowl in Hudson, Wisconsin. And in conglomeration with the Daily Iberian, we're putting a spin on the traditional Little Free Libraries and instead repurposing unique bins that were going to be thrown out. Mike Meserly generally offered to donate these newspaper boxes to us for repurposing, and Ann Dara will be showing us how. Ann has worked as a graphic designer and illustrator for over 40 years. She has a Bachelor's of Applied Arts degree from UL Lafayette and was a partner in Dara Designs and Marketing based here in New Iberia. She was previously employed for 13 years as the art director of the award-winning Times of Acadiana. While her work has won numerous advertising awards for herself and her clients, she is most proud of the accomplishments of her Little Brooklyn Neighborhood Initiative. With her background, it's only fitting that the Little Brooklyn project she initiated involves design, architecture, and her other love, connecting people. I'm sure that's why when I asked her to do this presentation, she was more than willing. Please welcome Ann Dare. Thank you. How y'all doing? We're going to be rather casual here. Can y'all hear me? Probably don't even need this, but. OK, today we're going to show you how to adapt the Daily Iberian vending box into a little free library. It, was some, it makes perfect sense because they are just about in, you know, impossible to beat up. Uh, they're, they're waterproof. They look great. And you can take something that looks like this and turn it into something really cute, and the cuteness all depends on how you want to do it. Starting today, neighbors from all parts of New Iberia are going to be making sharing, sharing libraries or little free libraries for their neighborhoods. It's a citywide project that you can be a part of, and you may want to get on board with it. Even student Ruthie Helms has built, I think, five of them as, a, as an Eagle Scout project. Right, <laughs> that's right. So let me introduce our guests. We have Catherine Scheffler Como, is, is a mom and a writer. Uh, from her home in Lafayette, she's come, and she's going to give you background on how to cite your library, how to care for your library, and she even has made a little free library or more than one. How many? She stewards one. Yeah. <laughs> but the cool thing is, she also met the man who invented the little free library. And she'll tell you a little bit of background on it. Next is my little brother, Lee Bakke. Uh, he's a master cabinet maker and so much more. Lee can figure out anything. So when I was asked by Ellen if I would do this, I immediately enlisted Lee, who can figure out anything on how to put things together, how to make things work, how not to snap your fingers off when you open these things. And so he's going to tell us all about how we went from that to this. Uh, our third creative partner, unfortunately, had to work today and can't be here, and that is, she is Laura Field Segura, who jumped at the chance to both decorate and paint, design this box, and also she will be the steward of this box afterwards and keep it filled with books. Goldie Sesha in the back row is also the coordinator of their project. And at the end of our talk, we'll be able to tell you that there are sign-up sheets available for you or anybody else you know to be able to uh, take one of these and get started with it. So first, we're going to have uh, Catherine explain a little bit about everything about Little Free Libraries. Thank you, Catherine. Great. And I love the idea that I, I built a little free library, but honestly, I responded to a, um, a call out UL's, um, ULL's art department was holding a design competition to design and build a slew of these, I think about 15, and then there were 10 winners chosen, and I was able to get one of those winners because I raised my hand and said, me, 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 I'll take one. I loved the idea of it. And so the students and the professors, they came and they installed it in my yard. I live in a neighborhood in, la in like the eastern part of Lafayette. It's a fairly older section of town. And we have this um, big boulevard that a lot of people come jogging and walking in our neighborhood. And I lived right on that. We call it the mall. 
And, um, and my kids don't know what a real mall is. They think it's a place to go climb trees. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that's where that was. There was a lot of traffic that, that people could come and use the library. So one evening, my kids and I were eating crawfish. My brother-in-law was in town. He was like, let's have crawfish. We're sitting eating crawfish. There's a knock on the door. It's my friend who's a newspaper reporter. And she's like, hey, 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 I have someone with me I want you to meet because we're so excited you have a little free library. And it was Todd Bowles. He was in town because he had heard, I think, of the design competition for ULL. And he knew that there were at least a dozen that had been recently deployed in the community. And my friend was writing a piece about it. And she actually had us all over. And we got to sit with Todd. And he talked about, there was, a, I think, a librarian in his life who had passed away. And this was, oh, it was his mom. And I'm so glad. <laughs> yeah. I obviously don't, don't get all the details every time. But um, <laughs> it was his mother, who was also a librarian. And when she passed away, it was his way of commemorating her. And what's been fascinating to witness is just the, the concept of putting a little something out there as a gathering point for strangers to meet and to get something. Like ours, for example, we situated a bench near it. I had a bench. And um, yes, I did kind of chain the bench down because my husband worked a really long time on making this bench new again. He's like, you better lock that bench up. <laughs> So, yes, I did discreetly kind of chain the bench down and put a padlock on. But because, you know, you call it a little free library. Um, and what happened with that bench was that my neighbors who had a lot of extra cucumbers one year, they put a bag of cucumbers on it and they let everybody know, hey, little free library, get your little free cucumbers. And myself, one year, our grapefruit tree, I kid you not, we must have taken at least 50 bags of grapefruit off this tree. And there's only so much grapefruit you can eat, juice, and freeze. And I would put sacks and sacks of grapefruit, and they disappear. And I had to warn my kids, hey, don't park your bike by the little free bench, because it might disappear. But there's, um, there's a woman, too, that I still see her around the community. And I know her because she stopped in at our little free library. She's not even someone who lives here. She has a relative in Lafayette who she visits occasionally. But we've made a connection because she stopped by my little free library. And another, there was another woman whose sister lived in my neighborhood. And she, by the time I met her, she must have been 87. She drove a little white convertible. And she pulled up to my little free library once and I saw her loading stuff in. I was like, what you doing, Miss Hope? And it was her collection of romance novels. And so I, I got to know Miss Hope and that she enjoyed romance novels. And it, you, it's, it was very neat to, or it has been very neat to, to see the people who stop in. You know, people just curious. People, people do look to offload their stash and I'll that a little bit later in, in being a good steward but um, it's definitely a point of connection for our neighborhood and we eventually we moved around the corner down the hill to a dead end location and the new owner of the home were like eh, we don't want the little free library so it went in my shed for a while and there were people knew we had it eventually Someone came and said, hey, I want to I wanna refurbish it, and I want to put it in a more public area. I knew I wasn't going to put it on my dead-end street. I just wouldn't get the traffic. And so we re they refurbished it. They did a little more weatherproofing because the design of the box by the UL student, while it was lovely, it had a few flaws, and it needed a little better weatherproofing and a little straightening up. And so... Now it's located on the mall, which is the, the wide boulevard. 
And the, the original intent of the person who had renovated it for me, or refurbished, I should say, was to add a geocache. Is anybody familiar with geocaching? Um, he would... He, seemed to, he wasn't able to do it, so it wasn't done. But that's just a little something to think about as well as a way to generate traffic to your little free library to, is to add maybe a little box that has a geocache. Um, I don't know how popular geocaching is <laughs> right now, if, if at all. But that was, that was something that was thought of. But about being a steward, I found that you know it's important to find the right location, make sure there's going to be some traffic, and then check in on it. See, you know, after we get 12 inches of rain in a week, find out how your box has fared. Do your books feel a little wet? Are things getting in? Just keep track of that as, as we experience weather that your box may not like. Except these, if y'all are using these, uh, you're probably not going to have trouble with weather. What you might have trouble with is an overabundance of Romance. <laughs> I, we, my daughter and I stopped by the, the Little Free Library on our way here today to um, just do a little check-in, see, see what we might need to um, cull. And to be clear, I'm not against romance. I just thought this was the most hilarious title, and I thought I should bring it and share it. And I, on my way over here, I said to myself, well, Catherine, maybe you should, maybe you should read it. <laughs> And see, it's popular for some reason. And, um, but you do want to watch out for things like an overabundance of cookbooks. Or I know sometimes people are clearing out their, you know, how to use Windows 98 texts that are about this thick. And, you know, these, these are books that obviously someone would just didn't have the heart to throw away. And so they've stuck them in the little free library. Just because it's free doesn't mean it has to be trash. Um, and you know, in, in our little free library, this I brought this. This was a sample of I just found a few. They were like loose kids' book pages, and I think this plastic bag originally had something in it. But anyway, there's there's little there's surprisingly little problem with things like trash, um, and it's like I said, it's it's been a joy to to operate it and be the steward. What I like to do as a steward, every now and then, I should be more regimented about it, but I go and I take a picture of the books and I put it up on our neighborhood webs website and I say, hey, don't forget, this is what we've got right now, come check it out. Because you know, people wanna <laughs> search virtually, so that's kind of a, a way that I have tried to meet that more modern way of, of doing things. Although my kids and I, we often just go on little free library tours around town and, you know, see what we get. It's our little free library right now, I noticed disappointingly, does not have any children's books. <laughs> this is something I need to remedy because I know there are kids, this is my daughter in the audience right here actually, and I know there are kids like here who, now, they're pretty sad when all they find is stuff like seduction, Southern style. Um, so, where is everybody here from New Iberia? Do I, and do you have a little free library already? No, no, no. I'm, I'm calling, trying to get uh, people interested, and uh, we did have quite a few. Uh, you called in today that they weren't able to make the meeting, but they were still very interested in getting a box. Great, 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 great. So, um, yeah, uh, we're just waiting to, uh, the, the girl I called this morning who was supposed to pick up this box, I don't think she was here, but um, hopefully someone would think about, consider taking it home with them. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful way to make connections. It's a, one, it's a wonderful use of these boxes. Um, and I highly encourage it. Let me see if there's anything else in here that I wanted to touch on. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Catherine. And Please do. 
Please do pipe up if, if you think of more as, as we're talking. So I'd like to introduce Lee Bake. He is the person who is going to teach you today how to do it. And we have, make sure uh, to take home, even if you don't think you're going to do, uh, to sign up today to, to create one, we have flyers on how to do it. And you'd, everything that we're going to say is in here, but even more is in here. And there's some at the front desk, I mean, at the table right behind you, and there'll be some right here. And so we're going to turn it over to Lee, who's going to tell you kind of step by step. He and I will work together to tell you how he did it. And I'll let you all know, first off, I'm very unaccustomed to public speaking, because <laughs> since this is the first time ever, so if things don't go as smoothly as it did with over here, uh, yeah, just bear, bear with me. Doing greatly. Just because he's never held a microphone doesn't mean he's not <laughs> totally ready for public speaking. Ooh, yeah, I might borrow that one. So no. let's see. Basically, what you have here is a little free library that we chose to take the top off. You can do it by leaving the top on, but in a way, it's even more complicated because there's lots of holes that need to be covered, right, Lee? Yeah. The, um, the none of the holes in this will let water get into the the main box, but the main problem is this guillotine that'll take off somebody's finger. That needs to be secured shut. It's as simple, you could take some silicone, put some silicone on the two sides, smash it down once that grabs. Silicone has a holding power of 100 pounds per square inch. So if you get about eight inches on each side, nobody's gonna pull it open. The, the holes, you don't need to do anything with on those. The thing that I found about that, though, there are holes in this because that was the mechanism to, yeah, to bolt locked. it where the money went. But the problem is you'll see the top of this is all rusty. And if you're going to have your library outside, which most people will do, you will get water inside, which will rust your top. So you may want to add a piece of metal. Well, it's actually it's the water that sits between ah. the top box and the bottom box right. from here. Not from what's getting inside. Right. So eventually you will end up developing rust there if you leave your top on. But the, I, when I mentioned Ruthie Helms earlier, she kept hers on and secured it, and she turned hers into a robot because it sort of looks like that already. Some of them, there are lots of ideas that you can see on the Internet where you add little rubber hoses for the little arms on it, and you can create, you know, create something really cute like that. Okay, so then what did you do, Lee? So tell us how you took the top off then. To, and you can show, see. To remove there. the top, it's held on with four bolts. Raise it up. You come inside this. Well, mine was easier to work on. Uh, these are pretty rusted. You'd almost have to grind these off. Mine, I was able to remove the nuts, lift the box off. And then the, the four bolts aren't bolts, they're welded in studs. So I took a grinder and ground the four studs off. That okay. cleaned up the whole top, allowed me to clean any rust off of it and smooth it off like that was. And like Ann saying, if you wanna make a robot out of it, well, you need a head. So it will work that way too. Okay, it so- It just needs to be secured shut. And so after you did that, what we do, as we were designing this, we decided everything that's here to open it up with is fine just as it is. So yeah. what did you do next, Lee? Well, I can show you on this one. Inside is a mechanism that they put the papers on. Y'all are welcome it's, to come up. This a is a hands-on workshop. Come on up if you want and see up close, <laughs> whatever you'd like. And y'all are welcome at the end to come up here and we'll answer yeah, questions this hands one, on. This is mangled up. Uh, to, remove this, to remove this inside piece, up at the, there's a steel rod goes all the way through the bottom of the box. Up at the top, there's a little hairpin clip. You pull out the clips on each rod, lay the machine on its back or on its side, and pull the rod out from the bottom of the box. Once you do that, these springs, which are stiff because the rod's in it, become flexible. You can bend the, the spring to unhook the top, and the shelf lifts out. That empties the whole box. You can't see that here, but there are two holes in the bottom. Did you cover those up to prevent rodents? Or? No, I didn't. I didn't think about that. 
Uh, Good idea, Catherine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This our little box. And, and you, I do, I do, ref, I do talk about blocking off the holes in the back. The, the same could be done on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> what 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 we had any hole that you see? Uh, ours is. Uh, we'll tell you in a little bit. Ours is going inside a building, but for all the outside ones, it is lock all of those. So the easiest thing that we came up with is if you have little pieces of sheet metal that you can just use some tin snips and cut that out. We, we used liquid nails. You can just attach or, or the silicone, as Lee had yeah. said, and you can just attach each piece like that. I, I don't know if this is worse, but a heavy duty plastic as well. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah, I, I was going to add that. I mean, you, you can even, if, if you buy some D-cell batteries, the plastic vacuum farm that's over the batteries, Cut the top off, the flat portion of it. You can use something like that. Um, if you have a gallon everywhere. milk jug that has yeah, a flat yeah. side, yeah. you can cut and anything. And just a little bit of silicone, a little bit of liquid nail, whatever you've got handy. Yeah, just press And block over the holes. Because there are two holes in the back. I had I, I blocked those two. And like Kathy's back. Oh, Karen. Catherine? Catherine. I was halfway right. Um, <laughs> Yeah, there's two. There's a couple of holes in the bottom, and those should be blocked off too. Okay. So one other thing. So if y'all if y'all have questions about taking out the, you need to be able to remove the shelf that's in there already because the shelf is weighted with you know so that as more papers are there, it drops the shelf lower and lower. So what by taking out those rods that are there and taking out that metal shelf, you discard all of that, and then you can end up putting in. Uh, some wooden shelves. So what Lee did here is that, and all of this is on your paper that we'll give you, He's, we decided there was enough room for two shelves. And so that is made of just quarter inch, three quarter inch plywood, and they sit on little cleats that are glued onto the side. So go ahead and explain that, Lee. Oh, you got books in Yeah, of course we have books in. We well, wanted them yeah. to see. Well, see, the, the shelves are just sitting in there loosely. As you can see, what you've got to do, like any time you put a shelf in a bookshelf, uh, if, if it's trapped like that, you make your shelf just a little bit narrower than the width itself because you have to tilt it up to get it out of there because there's a lip. Yeah, on, on the paper is the dimensions that the shelves need to be, the spacing for the cleats. If you notice, it just comes out. If the cleat is put any higher than it is right now, you can't get this top shelf in. So those numbers are important for this one and the bottom one. Silicone. Oh, that's it. That's it. Basically, what he did was okay. So, and all of this again is on our is on our sheet. Basically, he sanded everything down. If it's rusty, you might want to use some osfo to kill the rust. Uh, and then it's all sprayed with uh, rust oleum spray paint. That's all you have to do. Then what he did is he turned it on its side for one side to glue the cleat on. The cleat is just a little piece of wood that your shelf sits on. So we have the measurements, all you'll do is mark it, and then you're gonna glue your cleats on with uh, silicone or liquid nails. The next day he flipped it over to the other side and put the cleats on the other side. And uh, pre-paint your shelf to put it in, and, uh, and then you're good to go like that, okay? One other thing that he just thought of yesterday is that this, the door, and when y'all come up and take a look at it, the door has two uh, very strong springs to keep the door closed. Two things about the door, especially if you're gonna be outside, this, this thing is meant to have, to be able to be opened and kept open, yeah. right, Lee? Yeah, on, on the bar that stops it from opening any farther is a second little flipper bar. You open the door, if you raise that bar, it hits against a little tab to where when the paper man was loading it up, he could flip that, lock the door open, and put all of, your, all of his papers in. If this thing is in, indoors, it wouldn't be an issue. If it's outdoors and some little kid comes along and says, hey, I'm gonna play a joke on him, it's raining, open it up and lock it open, all your books get wrecked. Again, silicone to the rescue. There's a fixed bar and one bar that moves. 
I moved the one that moves up, squeezed a bunch of silicone onto it, and slid it back down. Now it's glued to the other one, and it can't move. And so, so the door can't be locked it open. It closes on its own. But the other thing is, by he also came up with the fact that it's a very there are two very strong springs. So he just, again, so that it makes it easier to open with little hands, he just disabled one of the springs. And we can show you that up here. So that it's quite easy now to open, but it always will still close. Okay. And Thank the rest you. of it is just scuffing it. At, it. It is an extremely hard paint. I have a random orbital power sander that I used. And even with a fresh piece of paper, it was hard to scuff it. And, you know, if you want your paint to stay on, it's got to be scuffed well. So a good scuff job. I sprayed the red. I mean, it can be done with a spray can. I have the equipment. I used canned paint and a spray gun and sprayed it with red. But like I say, the Rust-Oleum in the spray can is the same paint. It just goes on a little bit thinner, put a couple of more coats, get a good, good uh, coat on it. Random, <laughs> random orbital sander. Sandpaper and elbow grease. I don't know. Well, yeah, you'd use the wire, a wire brush on a, on a gel. Well, yeah, that just kind of puts deep scratches. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look, the paint job will look terrible. Okay. Is there any way that people who are working on these boxes could exchange information? Is there any platform? <laughs> Once they start working on them, uh, you know, I talked to Ellen about do, uh, getting someone to do something on Facebook. Oh, and yeah. we have been used. It's a great idea. But we I do have, have a site. You know, book them on the Tesla Right Festival. Mm -hmm. We have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. And so that would be a page. Oh, where yeah. We could just, you know, yeah. Um, people could ask questions and we could answer them. Yeah. Probably. That's a, that's a good idea. And, and as Catherine is saying, then they might say, I'd really like to do this, but I don't have a grinder. Or And somebody can say, I'll do that part for you. You know, that would, that's a good idea. Something that did come to mind, uh, as a steward, you need to have a place to be able to make donations of the books that you don't necessarily want in there. Now, a text like, you know, how to use Windows 98 as a paperback. Maybe you need it for a fire starter. <laughs> but maybe you need it to, you know, you can whittle out the center of a book and hide valuables. And then, um, there's, you know, there's book art. There's, you know, in some locations you can recycle paperbacks. But um, I have a location, be it a thrift store, a used bookstore. Our public library in Lafayette has two annual book sales that they take book donations year round. So you want to have that in place. So when you, you're at your little free library and you realize someone has just cleared out yeah. their um, yeah. son's textbook collection from 1987, then you need a place to, to put those. And well, the garbage on the garbage. I have lady at the library who's in charge of uh, the book sale. And she said that they had so many books and uh, they would be willing to give us some, you know, if people need books to stock the library. Oh, if you needed books, you're right. talking about? Right. I'm talking more about a location. That's and a great, that's a great. Have, and they also thought. have a, a free little library at the books, at the yes. library, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, I, I think in the. In the lobbies, they always have a stack of books that, that anybody can take anyway. If they are if they are a giveaway, they are certainly the giveaway to put in the library. And you know, I mean, what we have is Laura Field Segura, who painted this, is also going to be the steward of this library, and she has an attic full of books, and all her friends do too. So um, yeah, you'll you be just surprised. you just ask around, you yeah. just ask your friends to make donations um, to that, and and they will keep it coming. And of course. You know, people can come and take all the books that they want, but it is, of course, all about being a part of a community. And if you really want a stash of books, perhaps that person will also consider asking their friends so that you can also help restock it if you've, if you've taken lots of it. Because this is really all about community. All of you are here because you're community-minded. And, um, and this is, uh, I, got, I didn't do this by myself. I did it with a community because 
this is a community project. And, and, and what we we're, what we realized in our tours of the Lafayette Little Tree Library is because we have never found an empty library. It, well, I take that back. There's one that's under repair right now because they were having a roof issue. It's right by where my child takes flute lessons, so we make a regular stop at that one. And she's really anxious for them to get their roof repaired and get the books back in. <laughs> oh, you know what? what now that you said roof. There's uh, on our sheet of paper, which I've referred to way too many times. There's also uh, a lot of websites. It's easy to just not only can you can you just Google Little Tree Library, but you can also Google turning a newspaper vending box into a Little Tree Library. And there's lots of pages on that in Pinterest and everywhere else. I have a few of them, but it's really easy to find them. And while some of them are done well, leaving the top on, and others are done not like this, some people add a roof. Because you can, it is all about creativity. It is all about making it look like your home in your neighborhood or something, you know, that, that, that really works for the people that you're going to be serving with in this library. And so you would be able to build a little roof out of wood or metal. You could make a little tin roof out of leftovers. And again, we get this famous silicone. You would just build a little framework and then glue it right down onto the top of it. Y'all see questions? Oh, y'all can't hear me? I guess it's because I wasn't holding it up. Okay, do y'all have questions so far, Susie? Um, how do you make people aware that this exists? And do you put some instructions inside or something that tells people if they just pass by and they either don't know what it is or they don't know what they're looking for? Is that a process? Okay, one of the things that I asked Laura to put on it is take a book, leave a book. Sometimes it's called take a book, share a book. But no, there are no instructions on here, but New Iberia is kind of new to Little Free Library, so actually that's a very nice idea, that we could put a little card inside that would describe what this is all about. Um, what was the first part of your question, though, Susie? How do you find them? Okay, one thing that we have not gone through yet is Little Free Library is a nonprofit that, uh, that was started by the man who, um, who Catherine referenced earlier. And to really call it Little Free Library, you need to register it. Um, Ellen registered ours, and so they send you a plaque uh, that it is an official Little, Little Free Library. It has a number on it, and you are now part of an, a worldwide map where anybody can find where the books are in your area, where the libraries are in your area by going to their website. And so it will automatically be on an international website that our Little Free Library in Low Brooklyn will be there. But I believe that y'all also have talked about making, is this right, Ellen, that y'all are gonna make a map where all of them are as in New Iberia, come on up. I know really, none of us do. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm the publisher of the Daily Iberian, Michael Messerly, but, and I'm going to embarrass my editor by introducing her. And there's Emily Enfinger, who is our new editor as of, it's been over a month, right? Since, yeah, since Valentine's Day, right. Um, so one of the things that we reach n with, with our website, 9.5 out of every 10 people in the parish, 18 years and up. So we have great, that's also an advertising plug, by the way. But, um, you know, we, we have great reach in the community. So um, we're going to have a map on our website for the little library location. So whoever creates one, uh, we don't have a magical way of letting us know, but just call. It'll get to one of us. And then we will put it on the Google map so that people then are able to find where each of the little libraries are. It doesn't have to be one of our newspaper boxes. So if you've created some other library of some other form or shape or whatever the case may be, just let us know. We're more than happy then to add that to the map. We'll have that always available on our website, and then people will be able to find where the maps are that way. It's something we could certainly, exp oh, so let me touch it a little bit on that. So on the map, there'll be a little pinpoint. Uh, we'll probably have a book or some sort of logo that comes with it. If people click on it, we can have a little information. We can have picture then of the little library that's, that's there. So feel free to share all that information with us as, uh, you know, uh, we're donating these donating these big, you know, colossal, heavy things of steel. So, 
you know, we want people to be able to find them, but again, it can be any other type of, of uh, little library, and we'll add that to the list. One little promotional, the only, the only thing I ask, if you all don't mind, is if you're going to use one of ours, just please somehow designate that it came from the Daily Iberian, because we would just kind of like to know that, that we're participating in this. When you pick up, when you sign up and you pick up your box, it's going to come with this placard that uh, they're going to be printed and separate so that once you finish your painting, you'll be able to just slip that in and it will have both of the sponsors of these little free libraries, which is the Daily Iberian and the Literary Festival. Okay, this, this was, it is, it is made of heavy duty plastic. And in fact, I can show you, it's kind of tricky to get it in but that it was, it's done at Sir Speedy, who is a sponsor of the festival, and I won't pull it out, but see, basically, you, you slip it straight up into this, and then it, it just slips down into the, lo the bottom little thing, as long as it's sized just right. And this will last just about forever, as long as these will last. It, it's not the coroplast corrugated type. It, it, I can see the edge of it. it yeah, it's just, it's a solid, about a 330 second thick plastic so what and we, printed. So what we do in the newspaper business is we use this portion for promotion, for, for different things that, that we want to promote. They're like little mini billboards all throughout the town. Now they'll be your little libraries. Um, you know, so let's say you painted or somehow acknowledged in a different way and you wanted to use this space as promotion or maybe you want to make it seasonal, maybe you want to put a little piece of art here. I'm just saying the space is certainly available, but certainly our two organizations, if you wanted to use it in that shape or form, want some sort of you know, acknowledgement. I think the other opportunities, let's say you put together, I think maybe it was you or somebody talked about your neighborhood association puts together the library. Okay, so in that case, maybe that's what you put here. Please put our other two organizations somewhere else. But if you're neighborhood association has a Facebook page or a website, whatever the case may be, you can always put a QR code here in which they could scan that and then they can get more information possibly in the neighborhood or something like that. Or maybe there's something very specifically that you have a web page that you want to promote. You could put the QR code within here as well. But it's your library, you can do what you want. <laughs> along the Tesh Literary Festival will um, we have decided that we will pay for and buy the little plaques and and then you'll go online and register your library but um, the well the registration fee is a, it's $47 okay. to get this little plaque but the the books along the Tesh Literary Festival will pay for that and then you just go online and then register it then you're on you know their Worldwide so web. That's correct. Yes. 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 I, I so. something to add. When, when you were talking about the placard, our little free library and in, in my neighborhood, we had a chalkboard on front. And what I realized, my, my daughter had told me this, that uh, our chalkboard fell off and there are now nails protruding. So that is some, when you're, when you're, a steward of a library and you're looking for any weather intrusions but also look for any safety issues that might come up so it's on my to-do list please remind me Jolie that we have to trade out those nails for <laughs> screws which I think should hold um, and you just just watch out for those things like you watched out and um, removed that extra spring so it wouldn't be a, a finger smash um, possibility Okay. One, other, one other thing that I did that isn't absolutely necessary if you don't have a three pound hammer handy. Oh, yeah. On the inside of the box, from the lid going down, are two metal tabs, an inch and a half wide and about two inches down. Right. Uh, yeah, and there was nothing on them. I don't know why they're there, but I took a hammer and bent that back into its where it was cut out from to give a little more clearance for books. 
Let me go ahead and just, I think we've kind of covered most of it. I'd like to go ahead and just run through the last things I have to say, and then y'all come on up if you're, if you're interested in, in seeing all of this hands-on. So, y'all, if this looks like fun and you'd like to share a library with your neighbor, you can sign up today. There are sign-up sheets at the table in the back of the room. And later, even after today, the Bayou Tesh Museum will have those sign-up sheets too. Just fill it in and you'll be called when your box is ready to be picked up. You'll uh, receive a box plus the sponsor sign, as we said, and you'll need a truck or trailer because these are fairly heavy and, and help to haul it with. Once you've built and decorated your little free library, uh, we've been through all this, you need to keep it stocked with books, share with it, remember that the library had, the main library has books that you can uh, share with, uh, with your library. Um, we also want to let you know that our little free library, uh, unfortunately he is not here today, but Joe Battle of, um, of um, let me go back to where I started here. Um, Joe Battle is the barber uh, and owner of Brooklyn Fades uh, in Little Brooklyn, and we are putting our little free library in his place. His barbers are all readers and are very excited in sharing with their clients and neighbors um, the, to be able to get more people to read and more people to read to their kids. So he is going to, it'll be inside his building and he's got a platform all set up for it and we're gonna have chairs and that's what also you need is somebody to really care about it. Just like Catherine has said, please may I have your library that you're not using because I have a perfect spot. A lot of them are on on neutral ground or near corners of people's yards, it's a fine place. If you choose to make, put this up on a stand, this thing is heavy and you would never want somebody to tip this over onto themselves or someone else. So if you build a stand to raise it, it would need to be very strong, it would need to be attached to that and it could even need to be attached, that the stand could need to be attached in place. Yeah, and a, a, on, the, uh, on the very bottom of the box, there is a flat bar going across with two holes that are used to secure these down. Oh, okay. So you could, if you can have a welder friend that's gonna build a stand, or if you okay. build one out of wood, there is a means to attach it. So everybody, partner up as we have partnered here. Spread the word, share reading, share community, be a good neighbor, and let's all make New Iberia an even better place to live. Sign up and pick up an instruction sheet if you'd like to join in the fun. Thanks to Ellen Mullen for starting this citywide initiative. Also, thanks to the Daily Iberian, Book Salon, the Tesh Literary Festival, and Iberia Preservation Alliance, plus Catherine Scheffler Como, Lee Bakke, Laura Field Segura, and Joe Battle for sponsoring ours. Thank you very much. Y'all come on up and see.